After having gone through the complete quality control and assembly in other videos, we will see another branch of our workflow in this video, and that is how mapping can be done in Galaxy. But before we start with the mapping itself, it is important to go over some definitions, as you will find that these terms are being used interchangeably, but it is important to know what the correct meaning is. One of the parameters that can be set is the insert size, and this is the size of the fragment between the sequencing adapters. So it's the distance between the start of your actual sequence and the end of that sequence. Sometimes you will hear people refer to this as a fragment length, but that is incorrect, because the fragment length includes the sequencing adapters. The inner distance, finally, is a distance between the ends of both reads. So again, there are two tools available in Galaxy that can do read mapping, namely Bowtie 2 and BWA Man. We'll start with the demonstration of Bowtie 2, and we can find this in the section NGS Read Mapping under Bowtie 2. For the files, I just used the same files as in the previous tutorials. I just created a new history, loaded the files again, and ran Trimmer Matting on them. So as input for Bowtie 2, we have to select a paired end dataset, and I select the R1 paired and the R2 paired reads. If we want to set the insert size, we have to do this over here, where they ask us, do you want to set paired end options? If you select yes, you can set the minimum and the maximum fragment length to be able to tell whether or not a read pair mapped correctly. If you have small insertions or deletions, knowing the distance between the reads can help you identify those events later on, as the read should always have a certain distance between them. A larger distance between them indicates a possible insertion, and a shorter distance indicates a deletion. As this data is constructed with an Xterra XT kit, however, the insert sizes are between 250 and 2500 base pairs, so it's almost impossible to use this kind of data for such an analysis. If you were to have shared data of the same lengths, you can set the desired values here and the mapper will determine whether or not the pairs mapped correctly. As we don't care about the insert lengths for this analysis, we'll just select no over here. What remains is we have to select an index, a reference to map the reads to, and we're going to use a reference from the history which is the Neisseria meningitidis mc 58fast that we imported from the shared data. So this is our reference genome. The only thing that remains now is to execute Bowtie and wait for it to finish. Again, this will take a few minutes, so I'll fast forward and we'll continue when it's done. So Bowtie has finished now, and we have one output file, which is a sort of BAM file. A BAM file is a binary file, so it's not human readable. If we want to open this file and click on the view data, it will ask us to save the file on the hard disk because Galaxy cannot show us the contents of this binary file. I will cancel this for now. If we do want to have a look what's in this binary file in Galaxy, we can convert this file into a human readable sum format. To do this, we just search for the tool bum to sum. We select it. The correct input file is already selected, just have to click on execute and it will convert our BOM file, which is binary, into our SUM file, which is human readable. It has already converted. If you click on the eye icon now, you will get an overview of the file. If we select one of the lines from this file and make it a bit smaller so it fits on the screen, we see the different values that you can find on each line. So you have the read name a SAM flag of which you can find the meaning on the Broad Institute website, the reference genome, the position, and so on. One other interesting value is the cigar string. This will tell you how each base of the read aligned or not. An overview of all different possible codes can be seen here. So in the example that we had, all 232 bases of the read mapped correctly to the reference. So we just go to NGS read mapping, map with BWA mem, we use the reference from our history again. We select the R1 paired and the R2 paired input files. And here we can enter the mean, standard deviation, max and minimum lengths for inserts. If you don't enter a number here, the mean and standard deviation will be estimated by BWA MAM. If you do have the numbers, you can just insert them here. Only thing that remains is click execute and wait for the run to complete. So this will run for a few minutes. I'll fast forward again and we'll continue when this is finished. So the run is finished, and you can see that again we have one output file in the BOM format. If you want to convert it to something human readable, you just convert it to SUM. 
Now that we have our mapped reads, we can just continue our analysis of the data because mapping the reads on its own doesn't give us uh, the information that we want. So we just click Analyze Data and we can continue our analysis. But before we continue, I would like to say something about the difference in local and global alignment. BWAMM chooses automatically between local or global alignment, but prefers local alignment and only switches to global in certain conditions. In Bowtie 2, on the other hand, you can specifically tell it to use either local or global alignment. When we talk about global alignment, this is called end-to-end -end alignment in both tools. So a local alignment identifies the best match between two sequences, but only using a subsequence. This is a good strategy for short sequences with homology in one place, but different elsewhere. It is more sensitive for highly diverse sequences, like HIV strains. A global alignment, on the other hand, identifies the best match between two sequences using the entire sequence from end to end, hence the name used in the tools. This is a good strategy for sequences of similar length and homology. The next thing we have to do is check the quality of our output. So for Bowtie 2, this is an optional parameter that you can set, but if you want to have statistics on BWA MEM, you have to use another tool. And you can find this tool in NGS Picard, and we scroll down a bit, and there we find Collect Alignment Summary Metrics. So we select our BWA MEM data. The reference genome is again from history, the Neisseria meningitis MC58. We'll leave everything else as is and click Execute. So this will start running now. It doesn't take too long to complete. I'll refresh the history once more. So it's still running. I'll refresh it once more. And it has finished. When we have a look at the output file by clicking the eye icon, we get an overview of the total number of reads that were mapped, the number that passed the filters, the number of reads that could be aligned, and so on and so on. For an explanation of all columns, you can go to this side, where all the different column headers are explained. We can also visualize our mapped reads with a tool called Tablet. And this tool is available in a software catalog, or it can be downloaded and installed on the D drive, for instance. To visualize our mapped reads, we have to download the BOM file and the reference file. So to do that, we will just go to our BWA mem mapped reads, click on the download icon, and we'll first download the data set. We'll just save it in a directory that we know where it is. So in downloads, I will save it here, save. We also need the index file. So we click on download again and download the index. Also save this one in the same location. That's very important. And also it has to be the same name but with a different extension. So the first one is BOM, the second one is BY. And then we scroll down and we download our Neisseria reference. So we click on download, we save the file, and we also put it in the same directory. So now we have all our files on our disk in a moment. Yes, they have downloaded, and we can open Tablet. So I've opened Tablet now, and to visualize our mapped reads, we can go to the top left and click on Open Assembly. Then we click on Browse, and this is our primary assembly. So we go to the folder where we saved everything. In my case, it was Downloads. I'm going to select BOM assembly files. So you have to select the BOM file. If you don't do it filtered on BOM assembly files, make sure that you always pick the BOM file and not the BY file. So you click Open. We also browse for the FOSTA reference, which is the Neisseria meningitis FOSTA file. And we click on open. And now it will open. You see that it asks to select a contig to begin visualization. So the map reads are in one contig and you just click here and it will open all our map reads. So now with our map reads open, we can start zooming in up to the nucleotide level if you want. We can also change the background color. So this way you don't see any difference between a variant or the reference. If you slide it to the right, only the variants will light up. You can click anywhere in the genome to see where your reads mapped. You can also adjust the color schemes. So you can color on read group. 
You can also color on read length. And you can also color on concordance of reads. So you can choose a, a number of possibilities here. So this concludes the mapping. In the next videos, we will continue our analysis and extract some useful information from our assembly and alignments.